The LA Kings return home after their four-game road trip with mixed results. We'll discuss that and losing to an old friend on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We would love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co host of the Puck Podcast, it's a weekly NHL review show. That's been putting out content for the past 17 years and a passionate L.A. Kings fan for the past 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. Use Sleeper's terms of use for details. Hope you had a great weekend. The L.A. Kings weekend, not so great. Their NHL record 11-game road winning streak. The start of the season ended on Long Island with a 3-2 overtime loss, and then their big showdown against the New York Rangers on Sunday saw the Kings lose 4-1 and lose to an old friend. More on that coming up. But the Kings head home after their four-game road trip with a 2-1-1 record. The Kings played four games in seven days, including back-to-back games over the weekend. Uh, A quick recap of both of the two games since our last show on Saturday and Sunday. The Saturday game... Scoreless opening period for the Kings, but then L.A. jumped out to a 2-0 lead on goals from Adrian Kempe, his ninth of the season, on the power play, his first power play goal of the season. And then defenseman Vladislav Gavrikov scored his third of the year. Kings had a 2-0 lead going into the third period and looking good to extend that road winning streak to 12 in a row. But the Islanders had other ideas. They rallied with two goals in the third period from their captain, Anders Lee, somewhat controversially. We'll talk about that more in a bit. And then in overtime, it ended quickly. Jean-Gabriel Pajot, which is a fun name to say, uh, scored on a breakaway, and the Kings lost 3-2. to two. They do pick up a point, but certainly when you've got a 2 nothing lead going into the third and you're a good team with the lead like the Kings are, uh, that feels uh, more like a loss than anything else for sure. Well, it is a loss, but uh, you know you get a point out of it, but you don't feel great about it. Sunday uh, against the Rangers, big showdown of two of the top teams in the league. Scoreless opening period. Kings, though, found themselves down 2-0 uh, going into the third. Philip Deneau would return from injury, score a power play goal his seventh of the year to make it 2-1. Looked like the Kings might have some life, but the Rangers would score the next two goals and skate off with a 4-1 victory as for the islanders game a very rare loss for the kings who coming into the game had an 11 0 and 1 record this season in which they held a 2 nothing lead over their opponent the only other game they lost after going up 2 nothing was a home game against the vegas golden knights back on october 28th uh, kings had a 2 nothing lead on the golden knights ended up losing in a shootout uh, but that game also was tied 2-2 going into the third not the kings leading Two nothing going into the third. The Kings have been very good at protecting leads this year. They get a two nothing lead. Uh, they get a lead at all, frankly, and uh, they are a tough team to beat. So a very again rare loss for the LA Kings. Not only to lose a game where they led two nothing, but losing two nothing going into the third period that had not happened all season long. As for the loss to the Rangers, um, that was a game against one of the top teams in the NHL. Uh, the Kings, um, you know. They, they, how have they fared against some of the best teams in the NHL? If, if that was a question I had. Um, unfortunately, they came up short against the Rangers. But if you look at the Kings, who've played 25 games this season, 14 of those games have been against teams that are currently holding a playoff spot as we record this show. Uh, the Kings' record in those games against those 14 playoff teams, 8-3-3, three, and three, so pretty good. Uh, if you want to just look at the top 10 teams in the NHL standings overall, uh, the Kings in games against top 10 NHL teams, 5-3-1. and one. So the Kings definitely have uh, taken on some of the top teams in the league and fared pretty well. But unfortunately, in this big showdown against the Rangers, um, weren't able to uh, be a little bit better, a little bit more competitive. And there were some circumstances uh, surrounding that. You're closing out a, you know, a long road trip. 
with back-to-back games and that final game, your toughest test. Uh, the Kings, you know, did go toe-to-toe with the Rangers. Uh, they suffered a couple of injuries as well in that game, so we're a bit shorthanded. We'll get more into that in a second. Um, and also the Kings had to kill off uh, five power plays with varied success. Um, but it was a tall task for the Kings. Lose a couple players, expend a lot of energy trying to to kill off power plays, and then you fall behind and try to battle back. It was just too much for the Kings, unfortunately, and they did not play their best game against the New York Rangers. Fourth time this season, the Kings have played on back-to-back nights. Uh, They were 4-0-2 in the previous three back-to-back situations, but 0-1-1 over the weekend. Uh, The other three games in the back-to-back situations, Cam Talbot started the first game every time, as he did in this one, which was a little bit surprising to me. Phoenix Copley had started the second of the back-to-back nights, except for the first back-to-back of the season. That was in late October, and Talbot actually, Cam Talbot started both of those games. But we're going to talk about more on that decision of when to use the goaltenders uh, this weekend in a bit. But I think overall, it's hard not to feel disappointed by the results uh, of the weekend for sure. Uh, But if you're looking at the totality of that road trip, uh, the Kings certainly deserve a lot of credit for making NHL history, setting a new record for consecutive road wins to start a season. Uh, That is something that they should be very proud of. And as Kings fans, we should be very proud of them for what they've done. No team had ever done that in NHL history before, so that's awesome. They did come up a bit short going for the all-time road winning streak, unfortunately. Looked like it was in their hands against the Islanders, but let that one slip away. Um, So, yeah, it's hard not to feel, because of the way the road trip ended, I think it's a little bit hard not to feel disappointed. You let a game get away from you that you thought you had, and then you had this big showdown game against one of the best teams in the East, one of the best in the West, L.A. against New York, and the Kings just could not get it done for varying reasons against the Rangers. So I think it's fair to feel a bit disappointed uh, as the Kings come home uh, after that four-game road trip. But again, setting NHL history, always a pretty awesome thing as well. Let us get into what we liked and didn't like from over the weekend. We will do that here next on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy, also keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the price you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay is guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Hey, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, what did we like uh, about the weekend? Well, honestly, Not too much. Not that the Kings were certainly not. They weren't awful. Um, They certainly had a great chance to win the game on Saturday. Probably should have won the game on Saturday uh, against the Rangers. That was a tough one. Um, I'll tell you one thing I did like, though, and I I don't want to take this for granted. Philip Deneau uh, takes a puck to the face in the Rangers game in the first period. Obviously, he's hurt. He's bleeding, has to go off the ice, comes back wearing the full face shield, scores a power play goal at the Kings back in the game. Unfortunately, couldn't take advantage of it and rally back and, and at least get a point out of it or get a win. But you, I know it's cliched in, in some ways, and maybe we take it for granted. I don't want to take it for granted. The grit, the guts of hockey players in an era of load management and pitch counts. Uh, love to see the passion and desire hockey players have to want to get back out on the ice and play and play for their teammates because, uh, as we'll talk about in the moment, it's all about team in hockey, and it's probably why you love it. I know it's why I love it. 
Um, but love Philip Deneau coming back from that injury, scoring a goal, and just showing the grit and the desire. Awesome. Uh, there were, though, a couple of injuries to mention. Vladislav Gavrikov took a hit in the Islander game, uh, didn't return, a knee-on-knee -knee hit. He comes back, though, and starts the Rangers game, but then left after the first period and didn't return. Don't have an update on him. The Kings didn't practice today. So we will update Vladislav Gavrikov's uh, health status uh, coming up on tomorrow's show. I'm sure we'll get a report. So that is certainly a concern. Trevor Lewis also went uh, headfirst into the boards on a hit. Um, he uh, did not miss a shift, but it looked really bad when it first happened. So I'm sure he's going to be sore. Don't know if he'll miss a game or not because of that. Probably not because he's a hockey player, but we'll certainly keep an eye on Trevor Lewis as well. But again, update on Vladislav Gavrikov, hopefully coming up on tomorrow's show. I did want to mention one other thing that I liked and I wanted to point it out. Andreas England had a big hit on Islander star Matthew Barzal, ended up having to get into a fight over it because the Islanders were upset that one of their top players got hit with an absolutely clean hit. And I had heard that Andreas England was a player that might take a bad penalty or two. Uh, that not the case with the LA Kings. Not only is he a hard physical player, he's a clean player. Um, he very rarely takes penalties. And when he hits somebody, it's always an honest, straight on hit. Uh, something that maybe we didn't see uh, from some of the Kings opponents uh, this weekend. There are quite a few things we didn't like, uh, to be honest with you. Um, now, if you listen and watch this show for any length of time, I think you probably know I rarely bash officiating much. I think it's lazy. I think it's an easy excuse a lot of times for fans. And frankly, I have a lot of respect for officials because they do a thankless job, but a necessary job. That said, I thought the officiating in both the games over the weekend was pretty shaky uh, against the Islanders. There was a knee on knee hit that I mentioned on Vladislav Gavrikov that he ended up getting injured on. And then there was a slew footing incident on the Kings, Arthur Kaliev. Those are two of the more dangerous plays you can have in hockey, a knee on knee hit and a slew footing where you take a player's legs out from underneath them and they go backwards and hit their backs and maybe their heads on the ice and both those incidents involved uh, both those incidences involved islanders captain anders lee who oh by the way was not penalized for either ended up scoring both islanders goals to get him back in the game so i thought both those calls were definitely borderline calls they could have gone either way but you put them together in the same game from the same player and that seems pretty dicey uh, to me, to be honest with you, I thought the Rangers game was even worse. Uh, the officiating I thought was poor in that one. Uh, somehow Jonathan Quick doesn't get a penalty when he grabbed the leg of Peel Dubois in the crease, lifted it off the ice and held onto it. I'm like, how is that not a penalty? I mean, I'm all for goalies protecting their crease. You want to give a player, you know, in front of you a little shot in the back with your stick or something like that. That's fine. But to grab a player's leg and lift him up off the ice, like how is that in any way, shape, or form uh, legal? Uh, that was bizarre. Uh, I thought Adrian Kempe got called for a couple of dicey penalties. One of them, he got called for slashing when the Rangers player was holding onto his stick with one hand and he was coming down to steal the, the puck. And he, I mean, it wasn't a big windup by any stretch. He knocked the, the stick out of the guy's hand. They called that. And then the, there was a worse one. Kempe got called for a double minor on a hockey scrum that you see all the time. He had a little swipe at the guy's face, and then somebody grabs him from behind and puts him in a headlock. You know, 90% of the time, if not more, the referee just takes two guys and evens it up. To give the Rangers a power play on that, I thought was really weak. Um, look, give the Rangers credit. They have a very good power play, and they took advantage of their calls. But I, I, I thought some of the calls from over the weekend – uh, winning against the Kings and were very, very questionable. So that was tough. And and Tom McClellan talked about it after the game. Rangers got a good power play. And for the Kings to have to kill off five penalties, remember Vladislav Gabrikov's out. He's one of their top penalty killers. Philip Deneau was out for a while. He kills penalties as well. So you got guys that are doing, you know, killing penalties that aren't used to doing that. It expends a ton of energy, and it just was part of the reason why the Kings just couldn't get back in that game, even though it was 2-1 at one point, but they expended so much energy. They didn't have kind of that late push that they normally could have had. I'm not blaming the referees for the losses, but it didn't help. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, the Kings power play still uh, not good enough. Uh, two for eight uh, over the weekend. Uh, and look, 
P.L. Dubois, I know, has drawn the ire of a lot of Kings fans. And I have said I'm willing to give him some time to acclimate to a new system and to, to new teammates. But he's played 25 games now. That's enough time, I think, for you to get acclimated to your new teammates and to the new system. Um, he didn't have any points over the weekend. As a matter of fact, he had no points on the entire road trip. So um, it's it's about time. I know that some of you, your patience has already kind of run out with him. Uh, mine's starting to a little bit. It's it's time to see more from Pierre Dubois. Um, I didn't like starting Cam Talbot against the Islanders and Phoenix Copley against the Rangers. It made too much sense to me to do the opposite. Uh, now, I have no idea if it would have made any difference at all. I don't think that either goalie was particularly awful in either game, um, but I thought it was a weird decision by Todd McClellan, and he's pushed a lot of right, bu right buttons this season, but it made too much sense to me not to go with your backup goalie against the lesser of the two teams, which was the Islanders, all due respect, and to go with your number one goalie against the better of the two teams, the Rangers, and that didn't happen, and it didn't work out. Uh, and again, not necessarily saying that that decision kept the Kings from doing anything, but again, we'll never know. And I don't know. I, I have no idea why there was no, I, I saw no strategical reason to start Phoenix Copley against the Rangers and Cam Talbot against the Islanders. I know someone mentioned on Twitter that, well, it's the back to back of a four game trip. It's really unlikely you're going to win that game. So why not play the better goalie the night before and try and get two points out of that? I think that's overthinking things a little bit for me. Uh, speaking of the goalies, I didn't like losing to Jonathan Quick. <laughs> uh, I mean, I give Quick, Quick all the credit in the world. He made some quality saves. Uh, he showed some of that feistiness that we came to love when he was in L.A., maybe went over the line a bit with that P.L. Dubois thing. Um, but he certainly uh, helped the Rangers to get the victory against his old team. And I'm sure it was a bit weird for everyone involved. Uh, his former friends who were still playing on the Kings uh, for quick himself, for the fans. Um, I'm sure uh, that Jonathan quick circled this game on the calendar. I thought it was a great move by Peter Laviolette to get him out there because he was going to be highly motivated to get this win. Um, but I didn't feel good about it and I didn't feel good for him. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sure there are some of you who felt like Jonathan quick, was done dirty by the team or the organization, and maybe you felt good that he beat his old team and got some measure of revenge. I know I didn't. Uh, I still have no issue for how the Kings handled that situation. I'm not going to rehash it, but as I mentioned, it's a team sport. Hockey is a team sport, and the players all know that, and I thought the Kings did what they did at the time in the best interest of the team. Uh, I will admit that... Uh, I, I didn't feel great about losing to Jonathan Quick. Maybe that's some sour grapes on my part. Um, and look, he deserves all the credit in the world for what he has done. He has resurrected his career. He's been a revelation for the Rangers. 8-0-1 for New York. Uh, the save percentage is very good at 922. The goals against average is good at, at 2.20. It's a great story. Um, maybe he gets comeback player of the year if they, I mean, you know, Masterton Trophy is sort of like that. But anyway, um, did want to uh, mention... Jonathan Quick, what did he have to say about beating his old team afterwards? Uh, here was the quote. He said, yeah, it's special, right? Uh, it's a long day. You just want the game to start. Having never played them before, the way it ended there, you're replaying a lot of memories. Uh, that's a lot of thoughts running through your head. Uh, tough to nap. At the end of the day, we wanted to respond as a group, and we obviously responded. That was uh, Jonathan Quick who, uh, who did respond. Now, um, I'm sure it was a special night for Jonathan Quick. Uh, I don't blame him for feeling slighted by the Kings. Um, one day, hopefully he does return to L.A. to have his number 32 raised to the rafters, uh, maybe get a statue outside as well. And when that happens, I will applaud him and I will feel gratitude for everything he did for the Kings. But as for this past Sunday, he had a blue jersey on and he was trying to beat my favorite team. So uh, I did not feel good. I did not like Jonathan Quick beating the Kings, to be honest. And I don't think I'm being bitter about it necessarily. I, I give them all the credit in the world, like I said. But as a Kings fan, I, I want the Kings to win every game, regardless of who it's against or whether someone who I used to like is now playing for the other team. Um, I don't know. I just think that's being competitive, uh, something Jonathan Quick, I'm sure, can appreciate as one of the greatest competitive players I've ever seen in hockey. 
Uh, if he's still bitter, you know, with the Kings, maybe this win in some way smooths the, the, that out a little bit. Um, assuming things continue, uh, there's also another opportunity where maybe some healing can be done if it's necessary. Uh, the Kings are coming to LA uh, on January the 20th, and I'm sure there will be a video tribute paid to Jonathan Quick, and I'm sure the fans in attendance will absolutely stand and applaud and give Jonathan Quick the respect he deserves. Um, however, I hope he doesn't beat the Kings that night as well. Um, but look, he's the greatest goalie in Kings history. Um, but we talk about things we liked and didn't like. I will be honest. I will be honest. I did not like the Kings losing to Jonathan Quick. Uh, up next, we are going to look at where the Kings are in the standings. We're also going to give you a rain report. We've got terrible news for a Kings prospect and also some tough news for a former Kings player from the past as well. That's coming up here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Andre Kopitar scores a hat trick and the LA Kings win the Stanley Cup. That sounds great, right? Well, you know what else sounds great? You winning 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey on the Sleeper app. It's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our top choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you pick more or less based on goals, assists, points, saves, and more. And Sleeper offers 100 times payouts. And although we all love the NHL, not just about hockey, you got the NFL going as well. You got college football bowl games coming up, and the NBA is in full swing. It's a great time to get in on all the amazing sports action. Make the right picks, and you could win big. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, use again the promo code Locked On NHL to get up to hundred dollars match on your first deposit. That's Locked On NHL. Use sleepers' terms of use for details and locational availabilities. The LA Kings face the Winnipeg Jets 7.30 p.m. Pacific time coming up on Wednesday. Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast of your LA Kings with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search LA Kings. All right, let's take a look at the Pacific Division standings as we start a new week uh, in the NHL. And the Vegas Golden Knights are still on top in the division, a 19-5-5 record for 43 points. They have the most points in the West and in the entire NHL. This past week, they went 3-0-1. They had wins over St. Louis, Dallas, and San Jose, and an overtime loss to St. Louis. Vancouver in second place with an 18-9-1 record for 37 points. 2-1 uh, for Vancouver this past week. Wins over Minnesota and Carolina. They lost to New Jersey. Kings are in third place in the standings at 16-5-4 for 36 points, but they have games in hand on both Vegas and Vancouver. The Kings were 2-1-1 over the past week. Wins over Columbus and Montreal. Overtime loss to the Islanders and then a loss to the Rangers. Edmondson is starting to turn it on, unfortunately. 12-12-1 uh, 12, 12 and one is their record for 25 points, but they're currently riding a seven-game winning streak. They were 3-0 and this past week. Wins over New Jersey, Minnesota, and Carolina. Calgary right now is in fifth place in the division, 11-13-3 for 25 points. They were 1-2 this past week. They beat Carolina, lost to New Jersey and Minnesota. Uh, Seattle is uh, starting to fade uh, or spiral. Uh, they've lost eight straight. Uh, their record is 8-14-7 for 23 points. 0-3-1 this past week. Losses to Minnesota, New Jersey, and Montreal, and an overtime loss to Tampa Bay. Anaheim is in second to last in the Pacific at 10-17 and for 20 points. They were 0-3 this past week. Losses to Colorado, Chicago, and Winnipeg. And San Jose bringing up the rear, but had one of their best weeks of the season. Uh, they're 8-17-3 overall for 17 points. They were 2-0-1 this past week. They beat the Islanders and Detroit, both in overtime, and then lost to Vegas in a shootout. Let's get you a rain report, uh, an update on what's going on with the Kings AHL affiliate in Ontario. Uh, they went 2-1 over the past seven days. They beat Henderson 3-1 on Wednesday. Charles Udon, Akil Thomas, and Samuel Fogimo each had the goals for Fogimo, his 10th of the year. Brant Clark, a pair of assists. David Riddich, the winning net with 20 saves. Friday, the rain lost to Bakersfield 6-4. David Riddich allowed five goals on 26 shots. Samuel Fogimo did pick up his 11th of the year. Charles Udon, Akil Thomas, TJ Tynan with goals, and Brant Clark, two more assists. And then on Saturday, the rain beat Bakersfield 2-1. Charles Udon, his 10th of the year. Francesco Pinelli. Gets a goal, and Eric Portillo, 22 saves to improve to 7-1 and one on the season. Overall, the Reign are 14-7-2 and two on the year. 
second place in the Pacific Division. Coming up two games this week for the rain. Wednesday, they host Henderson. Saturday, they host Colorado. But there is some bad news for one of the Ontario rain players that we were hoping to see with the LA Kings at some point this season. And now, frankly, that could be up in the air. Alex Turcott in that uh, second game, the first game against Bakersfield, but the game on Friday, took an illegal hit to the head, an elbow to the head. He was hurt, left the ice, didn't return. The guys over at mayorsmanor.com are reporting it is a significant injury and he's going to miss a significant amount of time. Turcotte has a history of concussions. Doesn't take a, I mean, look, I, I'm not a doctor. I haven't examined him and there has no, been no official report. But if you get elbowed in the head and then the report comes out, you're going to miss a significant amount of time. It doesn't take a genius to probably think it's another concussion. And that's just awful, awful news for Alex Turcotte. Um, he was having a good season, 19 points in 23 games, five goals, 14 assists. This sucks. This is bad news for him personally, obviously, for the Kings overall. And um, now we just wait and see with Alex Turcotte. That's uh, just awful news. And on an illegal hit as well. Terrible. Still terrible for him. Also, best wishes to former LA King Tony Granado. Uh, if you didn't see this, he announced on social media that he has been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a form of cancer. Um, we wish him all the best in uh, his treatment and recovery. If you don't remember Tony Granado, he was on the Kings when I first became a Kings fan back in the 90s. Played seven years in LA, 380 games with the Kings, a 13-year NHL career. He was with the Kings from 1990 to 1996. A real hardworking, hard-nosed, talented guy from a great hockey family. Uh, all the best to Tony Granado, uh, former LA King. All right, sorry to end the show on a couple of down notes, but hopefully those uh, stories will have some uh, some good uh, outcomes here in the near future. For you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch Locked On of the Kings every day, coming up on tomorrow's show, we are scheduled to be joined by Kings host and reporter Carlin Baith. Uh, first time we've had her on, L excited about that. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to preview the Kings game against Winnipeg and bad blood between the Kings and former King Gabe Velarde. Uh, Thursday, obviously, we'll recap that game. Friday will be our fan feedback show. So lots coming up this week here on Locked on LA Kings. Hope you'll be with us for the whole week. Uh, if you want to get in contact with the show, we've got an email address you can use at any time. It's LockedOnEddie at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E. You can also post your thoughts and your comments uh, if you're watching on YouTube in the comment section below. We'd love you to stay interactive with the show throughout the week, throughout the days, uh, by being on uh, X and Twitter with us and Instagram. We are at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you, as always, for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We will talk to you on Tuesday. And as always, go Kings go.